Hello and welcome to this AI Coffee Break. I finally submitted my PhD thesis thanks to everyone who has congratulated me on this. You're wonderful. Now it's time to talk about efficient training methods allowing to train enormous deep learning models on consumer GPUs such as an NVIDIA RTX 4090. Maybe you already tried to train a large language model of 7 billion parameters only to run out of GPU memory? Well, it's a common problem that has been already addressed by parameter-efficient tuning methods such as LoRa, but such methods come with problems. Some can slow down training, whereas LoRa is fast but degrades model accuracy. Another problem is that it only works for model fine-tuning, but is not suited out of the box for pre-training. A new training technique called Galore might just be the solution you need as it outperforms LoRa in terms of accuracy and supports both pre-training and fine-tuning. Let's dive into it. But before we can understand the gist of Galore, we first need to remember what the key idea behind LoRa was. In a nutshell, LoRa approximates the large weight update matrices that consume a lot of GPU memory with two smaller matrices. In a bit more detail, a model with many parameters has large weight matrices for each layer. These matrices that we must tune during training are stored in the GPU memory and they are the main reason why you run out of GPU memory when training a large model. Especially since for each weight matrix you also need to store the gradient of each weight. Storing the optimizer states and the model activation only adds to the memory requirements. Okay, then LoRa tries to reduce the memory cost by the following. During fine-tuning, we basically take the pre-trained weights of the model and do updates on them, which here are denoted with delta W. And LoRa assumes that the updates that we do to the weight matrices are low rank, meaning that the weight update matrix can be approximated exactly by two matrices A and B, which have fewer rows or columns than the full delta W actually has. Low rank here is linear algebra jargon for saying some rows or columns of the original delta W matrix can be linearly combined by others. So we can just delete them because they do not bear important information. So LoRa does fine tuning updates on A and B, which have fewer entries, does require less memory. But the problem is that the weight update matrix is not always low rank, or at least not as low rank as the R rows and columns we set for A and B to save on GPU memory. R is a hyperparameter. So the approximation becomes inexact, leading to lower accuracy. And it's also possible that this reparameterization with A and B changes the optimization landscape, thus the gradient training dynamics which is not considered by the LoRa algorithm. So this is where Galore comes in. The key idea now for Galore is to approximate the gradients while LoRa approximates the weight updates. Instead of approximating the weight update matrices, one can work with gradient matrices given from a projection matrix P that contains only R columns. It's a lot of information, we'll explain in a bit how this all comes together. Also, Galore will take into account that the gradients change during training, as we will see in a minute. And to approximate the gradients is, and the authors show theoretically, a better idea. Because the weight update matrices are not always low rank or not as low rank as we need them to fit in GPU memory. But the gradient matrices are indeed low rank and we can work with this matrix P which has only R columns for deep ReLU networks with L2 loss functions or classification networks with softmax loss. In other words, we can update such a neural network with low rank gradient matrices and the network training will converge. So the authors assume ReLU networks, L2 loss or softmax loss. So these assumptions for their convergence proofs include many network layers we use in common architectures. But this does not include attention layers, only that in practice it still works for them too, as the authors show in the paper's experiments with large language models. So to summarize, Galore leverages the insight that neural networks converge with low rank gradients to reduce the memory requirements during training, devising a training algorithm as follows. 
Galore computes the gradient matrix G at each training step, which contains the gradients of the weights as in usual training. Then it determines matrices P and Q, and we'll discuss in a moment how to get P and Q. The thing about P and Q is that when multiplied to G, they can reconstruct G. But not perfectly though, as if we choose R too small to be less than the actual rank of G, we lose some precision, so we get just G tilde, which is the low rank approximation of G. What we gain is that instead of working with the full G in an optimization, one could work with P transposed times G, which the author's name R and is the low rank projection of the gradient matrix. R contains just R rows, so fewer than the original G, requiring less memory, but containing the important information from G. Only how to determine P and G? Via SVD, which is short for Singular Value Decomposition, as some of you may be already recognized. SVD is a matrix factorization method which decomposes a matrix into a rotation matrix V, a scaling matrix S, also called sigma, and another rotation matrix U. So basically, a linear transformation M is decomposed into a rotation, scaling, and another rotation. By doing this decomposition of M, one implicitly finds the directions to which the transformation M makes its changes, here sigma 1 and sigma 2. And to keep only R largest of these directions sigma is the key idea behind the LORAG projection of Galore. So with Galore, we apply this SVD decomposition to the gradient matrix G, this makes P and Q capture the directions of the R largest changes made by the gradient matrix G. R is a hyperparameter called rank of the low rank factorization. It directly determines how much GPU memory we save because we take R columns of U and V corresponding to the largest changes affected by G. In linear algebra talk, these columns we take correspond to the R largest singular values from matrix S. But it would be too expensive to compute new P and Q at each training step, so Galore only determines P and Q at the first training step and uses the same P and Q for the next large T steps. After large T steps, it computes new P and Q matrices to adapt for the changes of the gradients during training. In other words, Galore first does the updates with one version of P and Q and projects the gradient matrix with P in one subspace, here blue, and makes updates in this certain subspace. Then after T steps, we get new P and Q matrices and we can switch the subspace and update in a different direction. And finally, to make updates for the network, Galore multiplies P to the gradient matrix to determine R, which is the low rank projection of G at the current time step. It uses the optimizer to take a step into the direction specified by R. The great part about Galore is that it can use any optimizer, such as SGD or Adam or whatever else. Finally, Galore multiplies P with the updated version of R. Here, N contains the updates from very complicated update rules of Adam that you see here to recover the full gradient matrix G, but because it is a low rank approximation, it is just G tilde. With these full gradients, Galore updates the model weights and we're done. But one question remains, why multiply only with P and never use Q as SVD requires to recover the matrix G, or at least in the approximation G tilde? Well, to save memory. Basically, the authors use only the first rotation part of SVD to project G and get R and get G tilde. In this way, when counting for optimizer states, Galore only needs to store P, but not both P and Q, while LoRa needs to store two matrices, so both A and B. Galore is thus more memory efficient than LoRa, and in this table the authors also write the memory complexity for storing the weights with Galore applied to Adam and compare it to LoRa, in the favorable case of using only the P matrix and not also the Q matrix, and the memory cost for LoRa is larger for a given rank R of the low rank factorization because it needs to store the pre-trained weights as well as the low rank factorization of A and B. Galore merges the weight updates directly into the weight matrix and needs to save only that one, so the memory cost is lower than for LoRa. As for experimental results with Galore, they are quite impressive. Galore could retrain a Llama 7B with 8-bit optimizers from scratch on one consumer GPU with 24 gigabytes of memory, while LoRa is not suited for pre-training, so they don't compare to it. 
After 150,000 training steps corresponding to 19.7 billion tokens on the C4 dataset with Galore, Llama 7B achieved a perplexity of 14.65, and this is very close to training with Adam. This is still pre-training, something that Laura was not meant for. So now for fine-tuning, the authors conduct experiments with the Roberta base on glue. Galore achieved an average score of 85.89 and outperforms Laura, if only just by a bit. Also, I find the choice of the glue benchmark and model quite interesting and I would be curious to know how fine-tuning fares with larger and more modern models and benchmarks such as LAMAs or GPTs on math tests and so on. Now, wondering how large the step size T can be? Well, the authors conduct ablations with it. They find that the step size T can be quite good, around 250 to 500. Why? Because if T is too small and we change subspaces all the time, we end up not converging in any of those subspaces. If T is too large and we re-update P too seldomly, we basically optimize in just one subspace, so performance gets worse again. So Galore is a better theoretically motivated alternative to LoRa. It invests in theoretical proofs to make sound assumptions, leading to better performance than LoRa in fine-tuning, even if just by a bit. Unlike LoRa, it works out of the box for both pre-training and fine-tuning, so if you're running out of memory when training your large language models, Galore might be just the solution you need. What do you think about Galore? Let me know in the comments below, and if you like this video, do not forget to like and subscribe, as we would love to see you with our next video. Okay, bye.